together for our fearless leader, Taylor. What's up, guys? Does everybody remember the show, Are You Afraid of the Dark? All right, cool. Thank you guys for coming to Sumo. We'll see you guys later. No. Um, I love that show, personally. It's a great show. So tonight, welcome to Sumo, right? We have tonight, and then we have one more week, and then we're done with Sumo for the spring. Um, I was expecting, like, oh, but it's like, you guys are cool with that. That's fine. Um, no, we just know this time of year is crazy. We know it's stressful. We know it's hard. We don't continue to add to that. So we want to celebrate, have an awesome time next week. So make sure you're here next week as well. But I just want to ask you guys a quick question, and it's not a super comfortable question, but what stresses you out, right? It's like not a question you really start off with. That's why Alex didn't like start the, the night off with, hey, what stresses you out? Share that with a friend. What stresses you out? What kind of makes your skin kind of sweat? You know what I'm saying? Where you're not like sweat from like working out. You're like sweaty from like, dang, I just thought I had to do that. And I'm like, I'm dreading it. Like I'm just stressed. I don't like this. I don't want to like this. And for me personally, I wanted to kind of be open with you guys. Uh, this is something that stresses me out. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, because he's like kind of chubby, you can't really go. <laughs> you haters, wow. Everyone showed their true character just there. I run on treadmills all the time. That's not true. Um, I hated, and I'm going to share the story with you guys, I had to move a treadmill into my little house in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where I lived before I moved to Colorado and it stressed me out. So I'm gonna to explain to you kind of the situation. I'm gonna move this, because it's that important. And so, my house in Tulsa, you came in the front door, directly to your left was my kitchen. This is a very small house. Directly to your right was a weird staircase. Basements aren't really a thing in Oklahoma, but we had one for some reason. And that stairs went down to the basement. And then you walked like five paces forward, and it was the bed, like the bathroom, and then a bedroom and a bedroom. So this, this area, this T area, was very small. My wife, who we've been married for like six or seven months at this point, so we're still like, I don't know what we're still, we're married. And so, <laughs> like we're still happy, that makes no sense. We're still very happy. And so, six years on Friday, by the way, April 5th. Yes, yeah, yeah, thanks other people from six years of marriage. And so we're there, and it's, we bring it in. Like I have a bunch of buddies from TU, where I went to school. We bring it in, and it's just, not moving in. Like it, it won't go into the T and it's like, okay, well let's okay, we'll just move to the side real quick. Cause again we know these like weird arms, this won't break down. So it's just this weird L shape trying to fit into a T shape that's just not working. And so we're going, we're pushing. I'm trying to do this all by myself eventually because the guys have to go. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like ratcheting on it. I'm trying to take it apart. And for literally three days it just sat in that hallway T thing. Like we would just wake up and like step over it and like go away, like we would leave. And so we, we have this and every time I thought about it, I would just get a little sweaty, right? I was stressed. I was like, I hate this thing. I don't want to move it. We know we're moving to Colorado in six months. So I'm like killing myself to get this thing in here knowing in six months, I'm going to have to get it right back out. And I'm hating life. Megan, my wife is awesome. And she recruited a ton of girls randomly. Uh, the TU rowing team, the crew team, and they like busted it out, got in the room. Like I came home one day and it was just not there anymore. And I was like, what happened? She's like, I got the crew girls. <laughs> they came and like moved it for us. I was like, they're stronger than me anyway. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Megan. That's amazing. And so what in your life stresses you out, right? You think about it and you just get a little sweaty, like a little clammy. You're just uncomfortable when you think about it. What makes you stressed? There's a difference, obviously, of good stress, bad stress. We know that. Good stress motivates, right? It, it, it's, it helps you focus. It makes you productive. Those are good things, like accountability, things like that, that you're like, okay, that's good for me. I should do that. I'm on a, a workout routine, or I'm doing something with someone else, and that's good stress. Like, I need to get that done or taken care of. That's helpful. That's a good thing for us. Bad stress is when we're like paralyzed by it, right? It, it rules our mind, it rules our thoughts. It's all that we think about. It's just something that's, motive, that's stressing us out but we're not doing anything about it. And I know some of us in the room are like, yeah, man, my professor made this deadline, it's stressing me out. But I'm like, dude, they told you that like the beginning of the semester. And so that's not the professor's fault that you're stressed about it. You just didn't work on the project until one week before. That's different than good and bad stress. And so that's the subject tonight is just, what do we do with stress and anxiety? 
what does God want us to do with stress and anxiety? Again, if you've never been to Stuma before, welcome. <coughs> Stuma is a place for, man, if you have very little background with faith or a ton, man, this is the place for you. And that's what we want to look at. It's just according to the Bible, man, what does God want us to do with stress? Because we all know that we're, we live stressed lives. Would you guys agree with that? You just have a stressed life. Like what you're doing, how your time is spent, it's just hard. Like there's things in life that are stressful and that's very normal. But what are we supposed to do with that? Because sometimes it does lead to dysfunction. It leads to, to unhealth. Like it, it, it hurts us ultimately. Sometimes it helps us, but a lot of times stress can hurt us. So we're going to check out uh, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, <coughs> present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, we're learning what are we supposed to do with stress and anxiety right in our lives. What do we do with that? We've all felt it. We're all feeling it right now. I'm sure in the room, if we had the time and we added up all of the stress and the things that we're thinking about, dude, it's probably years worth of stress, right? That we've all we've got these things coming, these projects, these tests, these fraternity or sorority things, these athletic things we have to do, whatever. We all have things we have to be taken care of. And so God is telling us what we're supposed to do with our stress. And the two things I want to highlight here in the first verse, in verse 6, is he says, do not be anxious about anything. So what falls under that, that kind of word, anything? <coughs> everything, right? Yeah, it's that simple. Everything can fall under anything. So when, when he is speaking, when, when Paul is writing this, He is telling us, man, we are not supposed to be anxious about anything. So if that's a relationship situation, you shouldn't be anxious about it. If that's a school situation, you shouldn't be anxious about it. What we do with this, it says, but in every situation, so your situation is not so unique. Your situation is not so different that God can't handle it. He can. But he's saying in every situation, by prayer and petition, and those are kind of the two active things that we can do to to deal with our stress, to kind of give God our stress, prayer, man, we get to tell God what's going on. How many times have you been sitting there stressed, you're worried about something, you know what's going to happen, you're, you're anxious, you're unsure, and you've never prayed about it? Because when I think about myself, that's often. Like, I will think so much about something, I will blow it up in my mind, I'll freak out about it, I'll go to, like, the worst possible scenario. And then I'll think about it, and I'm like, dude, I haven't even prayed. Like, I haven't even brought this to God. Now, does God not know this is happening? No, he absolutely does. But what's with this and why this is so interesting is that we are still called to like bring this to him. We're still called to pray. We're still called to talk about this with God. And the other part of this is that we're supposed to, by prayer and petition, so we're supposed to ask. We're supposed to ask for the needs. God is saying, hey, ask for help. Ask for what you need. Ask for wisdom. Ask for, insert the blank, whatever you're needing, whatever your situation that's stressing you out, and making you not know what you need to do next, man, God is saying that he can help. He's promising, actually, that he can help. Because he's saying that if you will pray, and if you will petition, like if you will let me know, man, I'll, I'm there. Like I want to help you in this situation. And what's really interesting about this, too, is that it's with thanksgiving. What does that mean? With thanksgiving. What it means is that it's with a thankful heart. So, When we stress about school, what we can get really stuck on is just that class or that test or that paper. And we just stress and we stress and we stress. But like we're never like take a step back and think, man, I'm thankful that I'm in school. Is that like your guys' natural reaction when you're stressed? To to take a step back and say, man, thank you that I'm even in this situation. And what happens if you do that, which again, we're being reminded here. If this is with Thanksgiving, then what it does is it corrects our mind. It corrects our minds. It it helps fix our perspective. That we can be so close on a situation. Man, if I don't get this grade on this test, or if I don't get to talk to this girl at this time, or if I'm not doing this event at this time, that's all we can think about. Man, that's just a hard life. Like, when that's all that we're so focused micromanaging a certain situation. But if we will step back with thanksgiving, if we will go and we will pray and we'll tell God about what we're stressed about, (coughs) And we'll ask for help. And with thanksgiving, 
like we'll step back and realize, okay, this isn't the end of the world. Like if this doesn't go the way I'm hoping it does, it's not the end of the world. I'm thankful that I'm even here. Man, it's awesome. It, it fixes our perspective. It helps us have the right view. And a lot of times that's really the main issue is our view of whether that's ourselves or others or of God just needs to be corrected. That's normal. We all need that. But thanksgiving, if we will have appreciation for where we are, what God's done in our lives up to this point, man, it's awesome. And so I want to look at the three aspects of the peace of God, that next verse. I just kind of want to break down like this. The first one being that it transcends all understanding. So again, reading this last verse, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So the, th- the first one is that it transcends all understanding. What's so cool about the peace of God, which is ultimately why we are stressed, we're stressed because we don't have peace. Does that make sense? Kind of simple. But if we don't have peace, we're worried. We're stressed. We're, we're anxious. How do you want to phrase that? And so the peace of God, what's so sick about it, what's so cool, is that it transcends all understanding. So I can't explain it to you and say, hey, here's why the peace of God does that. It transcends, meaning it is over, all understanding. We don't get it. And so sometimes, practically speaking, there are situations where it's kind of like, man, there's just not a win. Like, this isn't a win-win situation. It's not a win-lose situation. It's a lose-lose situation, and I'm struggling. What do I do with this? And we can, the peace of God is still offered to us, and it transcends all understanding. When we can have peace about our situation, about whatever we're going through, again, family stuff, relationships, whatever, Man, it's awesome that that aspect of God's peace is that it's just, it's not circumstantial. You don't get the peace of God if it falls under these three criteria, right? This isn't a rubric that God has given us and said, hey, if if it hits these three things, if your three problems fit under this, then I will give you my peace. And he's saying, regardless of the situation, I will give you my peace. Like it transcends all understanding. You don't get it. And that's awesome. That's actually something to be celebrated. Another part, man, it guards our hearts and our minds. The peace of God guards our hearts and our minds, according to Philippians. What's so sick about that is that it protects us from future stress. Because when I stress, and I don't know about you guys, maybe this is just me, I will stress, I will solve whatever I'm stressed about. So it's either gone one way or the other, but it's kind of done. I don't need to worry about it anymore. And then I'm like, man, I just don't care anymore. I'm not stressed about anything. No, dude, I find the next thing to be worried about, right? It's like, I got another thing to do. Like, I have taxes still this year, and it's stressing me out. I don't want to do that. (laughs) You guys are like, yeah, 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 tests. But I'm like, it's the same thing, right? In school, it was like, okay, this assignment is done. Dude, I'm done. No, you have like three other things that you've also put off that you need to do, that you're worried about, that you're stressed about. That's normal. But what's cool with the peace of God is that it guards our hearts and our minds, so meaning that we don't have to continue to be stressed about that. Because there's always a new day, right? There's always something else that comes up. But God is promising us, man, that it protects us from more stress and anxiety. And then lastly, that it's in Jesus, the aspect of the peace of God that is in Jesus, meaning it's through him, it's through our relationship with him. And so when we know Jesus in a relationship, the daily stress kind of starts to melt away a little bit. When we know that we are in a relationship with God, that, that God loves us, that we've all sinned, that because of our sin, we're separated from God, but that we can know him in relationship because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross. All I have to do is kind of accept this gift and say, hey, I believe that. I trust that. If we've done that, suddenly our eternal stuff's kind of handled. So I'm not so worried about this stuff right now. It's kind of like seniors can maybe relate with this. It's like the senior who already has a job, like this time of year, right? It's like, hey, I'm already working. Are they super freaking out about the test? Dude, not really. Like, I already got a job. Like, I'm kind of good. I'm not freaking out. I'm not worried about that. And so in a way bigger way, in a way more important way, knowing Jesus, that this peace comes through Jesus, is important. And if you have that relationship, we can lose sight of that. But remembering and recalling that we have handled a really big thing. We know where our eternity is at. And so is this test, like, the same? Is it equivalent to my eternity? Not really. And by not really, I mean not at all. And so I can trust that this peace of God, this stress, the stuff that I'm feeling all the time, I can give it to God. He cares. 1 Peter 5, 7 also enforces this. It's really straightforward. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 
This is Peter talking about God. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. How awesome is that? I looked up the word cast. All it means is like to throw upon. To throw upon. That's it. Sorry. There's like no deeper meaning. I was like, man, I'm going to check this out. The Greek. What's the original? Oh, okay. It's exactly what I thought it was. So it's to throw upon. For me, I thought about the chair in college that always had like my shirts that like I'd worn but weren't dirty. You know what I'm saying? Where it was like, I'll wear this again. Boom. And then I'm like, oh, I'll wear this one again too. And I just have this like stack of 10 shirts to cast, right? To throw upon. That's what that is. That maybe helps you understand. What's cool is God's, what's God's motivation in this phrase? Cast all your anxiety on him, God, because he cares for you. What's his motivation here? care because he cares for you god is saying hey give me what you're stressed about because i love you it's that simple because i care about you because i made you because i i love you and so you guys have a note card and some of you've been writing that's great taking notes that's awesome what i want you guys to do initially on one side is write this phrase down anxieties are meant to be cast not carried some of you guys are using our six sumo pens. Congratulations. Those things are sweet. Some of you aren't. That's okay. We love you too. Go ahead and write that phrase down. Anxieties are meant to be cast, not carried. I love to hear you guys discussing that too. That's awesome. I know we're all just trying to find a pen. <laughs> Anxieties are meant to be cast, not carried. Are you guys tracking with that phrase? Does that make sense? When we are stressed, what are we supposed to do? Give it to God. Has anyone actually stressed about something so much that it went away? <laughs> Never, right? That's just not how it works. It's horrible. It doesn't work that way. If I will stress for three hours about it, it's gone. No, it's like I just wasted three hours of my life. And it's still an issue. And so what am I going to do with that? What can I do with that? Man, we are to cast our anxieties. We're not supposed to carry them. So when you're aware that you're stressed about something or you're worried, we're supposed to let that stuff go. We're supposed to give it to God. What I'm not telling you to do is like, hey, guys, believe in yourself. Man, you can do it, you guys. I'm not a motivational speaker like that. What you can't do is just internalize it and think it's going to go away. It's not. You need to give it to God. Anxieties are meant to be cast, not carried. Now, I'm going to show you guys an illustration. I'm going to have you draw it a little bit later. But I want to show you guys an illustration to maybe help you evaluate, man, where am I at? Where am I at on my stress? How am I viewing God? How am I viewing myself? This all really matters. So, check it out. When we are healthy, this is a triangle. Sick. We're tracking. God always loves me. God is always good. God is always in control. These are three things that are true of God. And if we can live in light of all three of these truths and be right here in the middle, dude, we could do anything. Like if I'm trusting that God is always good, that he always loves me, and that he's always in control, I could live under a bridge and be okay. Man, if that's true of my life, I'm good. Like, I don't care what I'm doing. I'm okay. But when we're stressed, what ends up happening is our exes kind of fall. Like, maybe I believe that God loves me, but I'm not really sure that he's in control. Or, or I'm not sure that he's always good. And it starts to kind of shift around. And that, what, that's what, that, that is what can be so difficult when we're stressed is like, man, theoretically, right, in my head, I know that some of those things are true. Practically, am I living in light of that? Practically, am I actually doing something because I know that that's true? Am I willing to give God my anxiety? Am I willing to, to actually pray and ask for help? Because sometimes we're not. And I'm saying that from personal experience. That's hard. I'm not claiming that that's really easy. Hey, if you guys will just write down your prayers and then burn them, they're gone. You never have to worry about that thing again. I'm like, that's not how it works, right? That's not life. God always loves me. God is always good. And he is always in control. What I want you guys to do on one other side of that, there's only two sides of that note card. I don't know why I said another side. <laughs> Flip it over and draw this triangle with these titles, right? That God always loves me. God is always in control. 
and God is always good. And then again, use this as a self-evaluation tool. Man, where am I actually believing that? And where am I not? Like, if I'm struggling with God is always good, then you can mark yourself over here. Man, I think that he's, he loves me. I believe that. I'm going to be right here. Or I always think he's in control. I trust that. Typically, when we're stressed, we don't believe that God's always in control. Or that he's always good. Hey, I got a D on my test. I don't believe that God's good. Well, I'm like, I don't believe that you studied. But <laughs> that's something we can talk about later. That's a case-to-case situation. So God always loves Everyone's like, that's true. Um, God always loves me. He does. God is always good, and he's always in control. So evaluating yourself, that's a big piece of this, too. I am not the most emotional person on earth. just want you guys to know that, right? I'm trying to be straight up. And so for me, if I'm not evaluating myself, or at least asking some questions, I'm sometimes just unaware. I won't realize how stressed I actually am. I won't realize how anxious I really am. And this really, really helps me evaluate, okay, do I believe that this is true? Am I trusting that? Do I believe that he loves me? Am I trusting that? Am I, do I believe that he's always in control? Am I trusting that? Here's a couple verses that I would also love for you guys to write down that can help you if you are struggling with one of these areas or all three of these areas. Checking these out and reading these can really, really help when you are stressed. That man, I'm not believing that God is always good. That man, check out First Chronicles 16.34. He's always in control, Isaiah 41 10. That he always loves me, John 3 16. And you can take a knee when you read it, Tim Tebow style, if you want. John 3 16, 1 Chronicles 16 34, Isaiah 41 10. This will also be in the video that Mitch is going to make tonight that we'll get a link for in the next day or two. And so if you're rushing to get this in there, you guys also have the link in the group game. But these are things to be evaluating, guys, as we think about stress. And that's just life. Just as a heads up, when you graduate college and you get a job or you get married or you have a family, right? I'm talking like 20 years down the road. You guys are like, this is never going to happen. Eventually, right? This idea of stress does not go away. You don't graduate college and you're like, dude, I don't have to go to class anymore. You're like, yes, that's true. Now you have a job. Like, you, you have responsibilities still. Like it doesn't go away. And then it just responsibility increases over time. And that's just life. So learning how to deal with your stress now is a very healthy thing. That's a very wise thing of you. Because life is going to be hard. That's another thing that God never promised us. He didn't say, hey, if you'll follow me, you'll never have an issue. You'll never have a hardship. You will. But what's so cool is the peace that he offers us in light of those things. Life is not promised to be easy. It never has been and never will be. And if anyone's trying to tell you that or sell you that, man, they're not, they don't care about your best interests. So I'm here to, to let you know, hey, hard things will happen. I don't know what that will look like for all of us. But typically when I've seen I'm the most stressed or the, the most anxious is when I actually push into God even more. I push into my relationship with him even more. And it helps me because I see results. I see that God is, is real, that I see that he's moving, that I do have a relationship with him. So when I feel that peace, I'm like, okay, this is amazing. Wow, I didn't make that happen. I didn't make myself have peace. You can't do that. But God promises us peace. And that's the only way to really deal with this. And so remembering to do some self-evaluation. So a couple applications from tonight, what I want to encourage you guys with, is to meditate on Philippians 4, 6 through 7, or 1 Peter 5, 7, the two verses we talked about tonight. Whenever you're stressed, maybe memorize one of them. 1 Peter 5, 7 is very short. That's maybe something, especially this time of year, to kind of keep in your back pocket, physically. Like write it on a note card and keep it in your back pocket. So when you feel that stress or that little bit of sweat or the heartbeat starts to go a little faster, okay, yeah, I need to cast my anxiety in him. Like he's asking for that. He wants that because he cares for me. Another one, don't put God on the back burner. I know how easy that is. I'm saying this from experience. Hey, I'm down to follow God as long as it's like I got the time. Like as long as, as things aren't hard. But as soon as they get hard, okay, God, hey, I'll come back. Like I promise, I'll be right back. I make ramen still, and I'll be cooking. And it's like, hey, Megan needs to use the burner. Okay, it's going to go on the back burner. It doesn't matter right now. Ramen isn't that important. We treat God like ramen. That's messed up. We shouldn't do that. That's horrible. What are we thinking? God's not ramen, right? God is, is above all of that. 
And so not putting him on the back burner, meaning, hey, I just can't really read my Bible today. I have to read 100 pages of my Bio book. And I'm like, you should read your Bible first. Like, that should be your first thing, is to, to, to prioritize God, to make that something you're looking into. Whether, again, you have a relationship or not, try that. See what it does. But just don't put it on the back burner. Don't think to pray right before the test, and that's the only time you've ever prayed about that stressful thing. Man, pray about that leading up to the test. Give that to God. Ask for help. And then lastly, evaluating yourself and remembering God's promises. Evaluating yourself with that triangle. Man, do I believe that God always loves me, that he is always good, that he is always in control. Use that triangle and just be like, man, I'm not believing this truth. I need to. And read that verse. Think about that. It can readjust, right? It can fix our perspective. Because a lot of times in life, stress, man, it just makes things hard. It makes things more difficult. And so what do we do with that? Do we lay down and be like, well, it's just harder. Sorry, I can't do anything anymore. No, we can absolutely take active steps to push back. And be like, dude, hey, this is stressful. It's not going to rule my life. This is giving me a little bit of anxiety, but I'm not ruined by it. We can absolutely take steps to prioritize God, not putting him on the back burner, and just being aware of ourselves, of, okay, how am I actually feeling? How am I actually doing? And again, I'm saying this because I'm also doing it. I'm not saying this because I'm not an anxious person. I am. I'm not saying this as someone who's never stressed in his life. I do. I was a kid in middle school who, like, wouldn't step on the cracks of the tiles. I was like weird OCD. And I was just stressed all the time. And I was worried all the time. And that was something I actually loved about coming to Christ, which wasn't until college. But when I made that decision to trust Christ, a lot of that stuff went away. And it was amazing, that peace that I was offered through that. But I still had stress, right? I still had hard things. I was taking 18 hours every single semester, my junior year through senior year, because I changed majors halfway through because Chem 2, uh, the devil made that. And so <laughs> I took some, some hits on there. So if anyone wants to struggle with Chem 2, that's OK. That's from Satan. And so I'm joking. It's horrible. I just did really poorly twice. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Switched to business. Things went way better for me. Now I do ministry. It wasn't in the plan. Who cares? So I would be stressed out. And I'd put God on the back burner. I wouldn't care enough. I wouldn't do what I needed to do. And I'm stressed. But man, when I would pray, when I would make that the first thing I did as opposed to the last thing, it helped. And I just want to encourage you guys to try that. See what happens. Try it for yourself. Man, if you need to read a ton, start with your Bible. Take the five minutes. Five minutes. Read your Bible first and see what happens after. I would be amazed how quickly I'd get through what I needed to read after I read my Bible first. I kind of view it as like a lock and key. Hey, if I have a huge study session in front of me, the way to get into that study session, which is what I need to do, I've got to get time in the Word first or I need to pray. And I would do that. And I felt like every time that I would actually do that, I would just bust through what I needed to get through. I felt like God just helped me. And I'm not promising you that, right? I'm not saying, hey, this is a sweet thing, but if you do this, this equation equals this. But I think God honors that, that you're actually putting your best fruit, for, your best fruit, kind of what Hunter talked about last week, but you're offering your best. So giving him that front end time as opposed to, hey, I'm about to pass out, set down my Instagram feed, and God, I just pray for that. I was like, God doesn't answer my prayer. I'm like, you didn't even finish the prayer. What are you talking about? You can't be mad about that. That is life, guys. Stress will happen. Things are hard. But God offers peace, which is awesome. So remembering that, man, anxieties are meant to be cast, not carried. So when you feel stress, or if you feel it right now, pray with me, because we're about to close out. But pray that you want to give that to God, that you want to ask for help in their situation. And again, that's not exclusive to school. I just know school's a big deal right now. But man, if that's family, if that's relationships, if that's anything outside of school, also give that to him. Let me pray. Lord, we just come to you right now to thank you um, that you do care for us, um, that you value us, or that you would care for us enough that you say you want to have our anxieties cast on you. So Lord, I pray that we would be people who do that. I pray that we'd be people who prioritize you in light of stress, I pray that we'd be people who are, are peaceful because we've given these situations to you or we've prayed through them. We've given them to you and, and you're honoring that. Lord, I just pray that we would continue to seek you first, that we'd be people who are continuing to pursue you in light of hard things, in light of our lives. And Lord, I just pray that our lives would reflect that and that it would only reflect for us, but also others, that it would also influence other people. Man, that people would see you in us. Lord, I thank you so much for this group and for
for this time together. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome, guys. We've got one more thing before we wrap up. Uh, I'm going to invite my buddy Joe up here to kind of share his testimony of what it looked like for him to make that decision to trust Christ in college and just kind of share with you guys his story. So if you guys will help me, let's welcome up Joe. All right, what's up, guys? I'm uh, Joe Kimberly, like he said. Um, I don't go to Colorado State. Um, what you guys are like, why do you have the mic? I don't know. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, so, yeah, I'll kind of tell you why I'm in the room, in the state, and then kind of a little bit of my story and the steps I took to get here. Um, so I live in Denver this year. Um, I went to University of Missouri. I was involved with SUMO there. Um, taking Missouri. Uh, just the Midwest. <laughs> Midwest. Midwest. Sorry, I, I, got, I got excited there. Um, so I was involved with Stumo at Mizzou. Um, but uh, my buddy actually got drafted to the Nuggets this past year. Um, his name is Michael Porter Jr. So I actually lived with him and came out here to disciple him, kind of mentor him for the year, um, travel with him and the Nuggets. Um, so I'm taking a year off of school. So that's kind of why I'm in the state, uh, in the room. Uh, but I was involved with Stumo my three years at Mizzou. Um, so a little bit of my story, just how it kind of got used my mess and made really his message. Um, so I grew up in St. Louis, Midwest, and um, just kind of my faith background was I a lot, very much had it on the back burner, um, especially coming to college. But growing up, you know, went to church, probably like to get on paper, um, you know, compared to the person next to me, maybe was doing a little bit better, um, had some extracurricular activities that were involved with my faith, but really had never owned it. Um, so really one person with my friends and one person with my you know church friends and family like that so a lot of tension there but coming to the college um, really had to decide I thought I had to decide okay am I going to join a fraternity or am I going to pursue my faith because surely you can't do both of those things in college um, but I ended up pursuing uh, both I uh, joined a fraternity Lambda Chi I don't think Lambda Chi is here um, but joined Lambda Chi and got involved with Stumo which I thought was awesome because you know, it, it gears toward and it opens the door for people who are Greek, um, especially Mizzou. And um, so got involved, went to SMC, the winter um, conference, and also went to um, Kaleo. Um, but really it was my sophomore year after going to SMC and really starting to slow down and think about, you know, is this, is this really what life is all about? You know, here at the apex of life, what a lot of people say, you know, college is the best years of your life. You know, why is there just still like this hole here that I'm trying to, cram with whether it's girls or partying or whatnot, why, why is that hole still there? And uh, really what I found is that the answer and the, the filling to that hole is a relationship with Christ. And I really found that out my sophomore year. Um, went down to Kaleo. Um, how many guys are going to Kaleo? Sweet. I'm, I'm so pumped about that. So I'm actually going down for my third year. Um, I would highly recommend it to anybody. Because that was really one of the, like, the fulcrum of what placed everything together and put all the pieces together in my faith. Really what it meant to um, come back into my fraternity and show guys a lot about this peace that I experienced. Um, a lot about the joy that comes through walking with Christ, the purpose, the meaning of my life. Um, a lot of those things, I was like, man, these, these things have really impacted my life. I want to go back and give them to other people. Um, so Kaleo is just amazing. It equips you um, really just to do that on, on a level that I wouldn't have been able to do without it. Um, so I would highly recommend anybody who's on the fence. I know I was on the fence after my freshman year, and I was like, man, I'm going to go to Kaleo. And then my buddy was like, no, come down to, you know, just come back for the summer and chill in St. Louis. And I was like, all right, fine. I wish I would have gone so bad. That would have been amazing if I went freshman year. Um, so if any of you guys are on the fence, especially you fellas, if you're on the fence, pull the trigger. Go for it. I promise you will not regret it. Um, but, yeah, just Kaleo really locked in all those things. Actually, that's actually where I started praying um, for Mike, uh, my buddy who I'm out here with, I started praying for him by name um, at Kaleo because we started praying for athletes and stuff like that. And um, just a crazy God story of how it got lined up. But that's uh, that's why I'm out here. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of my story. And uh, if you have any questions about the situation, I'll I'll hang around. I like talking about it because it's not my doing. It's really God. So appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Joe. been hanging out with Vaughn Miller uh, as well. Um, no, that's amazing. Please get to know Joe. He's an awesome guy. I uh, appreciate him driving up today. So, guys, we got one more sumo, right? It's going to be next week. 
it's going to be here. We'll be in this room again. We'll celebrate. It's going to be an awesome time. It's going to be a little bit different. We have some people kind of sharing stories, what this last year has been for them. Uh, and so it's going to be really, really cool. It's going to be an awesome time to even bring friends, celebration. We'll have Crazy Carl's per usual. And so it's, it's just going to be a cool time. And so I'd invite you guys to definitely come back, bring new friends, bring new people with you. Um, but yeah, just want to say thanks so much for being here, and we will see you guys next week. See ya. Oh, yeah.